All right, so here it is, the PLX Cross 12. Uh, this thing is sexy. Look at this. I really like the overall look and the overall feel. It's a lot of black. The one nitpick is, for whatever reason, a black head shell on a silver tone arm looks great to me. Gray head shell on a black tone arm, that ah, doesn't look great. Uh, but overall, this is a, a very, very gorgeous looking deck. It's not ostentatious. It doesn't look like uh, some kind of bad futuristic spaceship mock-up like some of the decks from the 2000s, especially that new mark TTX. It was a great deck, but it definitely looked uh, a little out there. It's definitely less uh, in your face than even the Reloop 8000 Mark II, which has like a big line of buttons underneath. Uh, th this looks classy and it looks refined. Uh, you've got your four buttons here. They're multicolored. They look good and they're not intrusive. But first, you want to learn about the platter because I want to talk about the platter. So here it is. The Cross 12 platter. Now, the Cross 12 is still ultimately a hand pin super OEM chassis, which is the same company that makes all the other turntables pretty much, with the exception, I believe, of the Denon VL12s. That doesn't mean that this is exactly the same as the PLX 1000 or the Reloop 8000 Pioneer DJ and or Alpha Theta had their hands in pretty much every aspect of the design here. And it's customized not only this kind of cool uh, Magvel clamp mechanism, but also they really fine tuned the torque and feel. So it emulated some of the most favored turntablist decks. So I believe on high torque, it was modeled after the Vestax PDX 2000s, which is a heavily sought after uh, deck for turntablists. The mid torque is uh, basically trying to be the Technique's 1200 feel and then low torque, couldn't even tell you. I don't know anybody who would actually prefer and voluntarily choose to set it on low torque. So let's talk about the Magvel clamp. So here's the thing, how this deck works. This is a whole lot like the locking spindle mechanisms you'd find on the Rain 12s, the Rain 1, the old Newmark NS7. In fact, it goes all the way back to the early 2000s with the uh, Denon 5000s. Not the, not the SC 5000s, but the DN 5000s. I believe that was the very first CDJ that had a spinning platter. So at its core, the mechanism is pretty much the same in how it functions. The spindle here spins independently of the platter and it's the spindle that controls the transport in Serato. So if I twist this, and you can see on the screen that it's moving. Let's take a close look at this. There's these sort of three pegs. I'll give you a top-down view that kind of form, I guess if there's a circle around it, it would be kind of like the Mercedes-Benz logo, right? And if you take a look at the other end of the Magvel clamp, it's got these little teeth here. So this actually fits right on top and these teeth kind of lock it to the spindle, like so. And the magnet keeps it in place. I believe the magnet is, I want to say it's the centerpiece, not the edges. Yeah, it kind of feels that way. Like the, right now I can feel the edges kind of coming off. So it's, this is the magnet in the center. There's a magnet along this edge and it clamps it down and these teeth kind of take the spindle with it. So for instance, I can do this. Right, and uh, that's what's causing all the transport and that's what's controlling Serato or record box. So the practical application is, I'm gonna throw a record on. You can put any record you want. This is one of my 
scratch records. And the clamp clamps through the record, through the slip mat, and onto that magnet below, like so. And we have this. Burn my so what happens is when the record spins, the friction uh, and the magnetic clamp takes the spindle with it. And when it's stopped, or when I stop the record, uh, the friction of the, um, of the spindle is low enough that when I stop, the spindle stops, but the platter keeps going. And then when I let go, it takes the, uh, takes the spindle with it. So that is actually the exact same functionality as the Rain 12s, as the Rain 1, as the old NS7s. But the big difference is, take a look, this is a Rain 12 plate. I call these my vanity plates. But you don't have to drill this adapter and, you, you know, you would clamp it with these screws, which also means you don't have to use a very specific plate. You can use anything. Anything you want, including, of course, the slip mat. So this is absolutely brilliant. I think this is one of the coolest and most innovative designs for a problem. It wasn't really a problem, but for something that had been basically standardized over the last almost 20 years. I think the, the DN5000 came out in 2002, maybe 2003. So it was a new solution to an old design that didn't really need it. And if you can see here, these screws are clamped in. So let's take a look at the platter. Okay. So we're gonna take this off and you'll notice right away that we have this big old hole here and this centerpiece here. And this is not the direct drive motor. This is the piece of metal uh, that essentially spins the turntable. The direct drive motor and the magnet, the electric magnet that drives the direct drive motor is underneath there. I'm not gonna take this apart because I'm already kind of playing a little bit with fire with this, but right away you can see this is a huge difference from a standard turntable. So this is my trusty Techniques platter uh, from an M3D. And you can see this is sort of the metal plate and the magnet kind of, this goes over the magnet and the magnet kind of like causes the record to spin. So what the good folks at Pioneer DJ have done is separated this kind of metal spot and put that onto the actual platter. And then with this little dot right here, kind of keeps it in place like so. Right? And then we screw the platter in. All right, we're gonna put this all back together. Now, this center piece is the other uh, big thing. Obviously, there's a magnet to keep it connected, but there's also this uh, sort of spinning railing on the outside, which I think helps smooth out the slip of the record. So we're just going to put this back together. Now, one of the added bonuses, and this is probably my favorite thing about the Magvel clamp, other than the fact that you can play Serato without having to have a needle and without having to have a battery powered phase is on the center here, this little dial here actually functions as a tension adjust, uh, which is absolutely amazing. So if you put it all the way to the right, uh, you have a very uh, high tension, very little slip. You can barely get one rotation and a little bit more than one rotation. 
Put it all the way. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. Although I think it's spinning that much because I still have my uh, I have my phase sticker, magnetic sticker under there, which is the opposite end. So, anyways, I find it easiest to put it right in the middle, and you get. So that's the platter in a nutshell. It is simultaneously an iteration on a tried and true method, but also a huge uh, leap forward in terms of innovation. The practical upshot is I have a record that can control Serato and also play vinyl. Or in the case of our control tone. I don't even have to take this off to do it. Uh, I know the phase is very similar. You know, you can throw phase on, keep playing, but you always have to charge it and you have these little uh, units here. The other thing you can do with this is if you are the type of DJ who used to like to spindle twist, you know, you got this little thing. You can grab and give it a little bit of a... A little bit of a go, uh, which you cannot do with the reins, you cannot do with the phase, can't even do it with the Rev 7. So this might make a lot of old schoolers very happy. A lot of people used to like to just give it, give the spindle a bit of a pinch and a twist to speed things up. So to put this out there, contrary to what a lot of people are saying, this is actually not the first digital vinyl hybrid turntable. There have been a couple iterations of it. It came out about 15 years ago. Both Gemini and Newmark had their own versions. It had a CD slot in the front. You could put your CD in there. It was a lot like the Rain 12, though. You had to have a very specific piece of vinyl that would kind of lock to the spindle and when you wanted to use CDJs. Uh, and then you take it off and put your vinyl on again, and if you wanted to play uh, with vinyl. But nobody's tried to do anything like this pretty much until now. So it's been a good, like, yeah, I want to say about 15 years, maybe even longer. So there we go.